question is that this bill be now agreed to in principle. I call the member for Balmain. Thank you very much, Madam Country Speaker. I rise today to speak on the Public Sector Employment and Management Amendment Bill 2012. This bill amends the Public Sector Employment and Management Act 2002 to make, to make changes to the so-called unattached list, to exclude the IRC from having jurisdiction over those who are on this list and to require the Public Service Commissioner to develop and issue guidelines to public sector agencies detailing the required elements of performance management systems. A new section 56 is inserted which adds additional powers regarding quote excess officers in a department. As under the existing law, the department head must satisfy themselves that the number of officers exceeds the number necessary for the quote effective, efficient and economical management of the department. The department head is required to take all practical steps to secure the transfer of excess officers to ongoing public sector positions. This is intended to get rid of the current system where these employees often end up in contract or temporary roles where these are available. If a worker takes temporary work in another agency under the new section 56.2, they will still be considered an excess employee. Section 57, which regulates excessive salaries of officers of departments, has a new section 51B, 57.1B, which inserts the requirement for the transfer to be, quote, an ongoing public sector position. The requirements for the Public Service Commissioner to develop performance management system guidelines for public sector staff is contained in the new section S101A. This further requires the head of the public sector agencies to develop and implement performance management systems for employees. The proposed new section 103A means that the excess employees will be excluded from the jurisdiction of the IRC as, to, as this related to the provisions of the Industrial Relations Act governing unfair contracts. Now, Madam Temporary Speaker, there is a significant background to this, and I'm sure that all members will agree that we want to have an efficient and effective public service. And this was part of the O'Farrell's announcement in June, which, end Labor's no, which was uh, seeking to end the former government's no force redundancies policy, to shorten the period of retaining excess employees from 12 to 3 months, and to reduce severance payments for public servants who rejected the initial offer for voluntary redundancy, to offer the one-off incentive payment uh, of $10,000 for current excess employees to accept new voluntary redundancy offers. In June 2011, there were 390 public servants on the unattached list. The previous legislation ending the no-force redundancies policy came into force on the 1st of August 2011. The New South Wales Commission of Audit, undertaken by Dr Kerry Schott, the former head of Sydney Water, made the following recommendation regarding this quote. The government should agree to the development of mechanisms to decouple positions from a narrow classification and appoint employees where appropriate to a substantive remuneration band level to provide greater flexibility and staff deployment within an agency or cluster." End quote. Now, Madam Temporary Speaker, there is some merit in this approach, but I note that the PSA strongly opposed these changes, arguing that those on the unattached list are generally still working full-time, but their position had been abolished. As part of the 2011 changes, workers on this list were offered the incentive redundancy payment, as I mentioned, and severage payments for unattached workers who rejected the initial voluntary redundancy offer were then reduced. Now, while the intent of much of this bill is admirable, we believe the bill needs amendment and do not support the bill at the moment. The mismanagement of staffing arrangement by the former government, including the no new positions policy, in our view, has contributed to the growth of the unattached list at the same time as agencies are increasingly reliant on contractors. Madam Temporary Speaker, we've seen in the media the impact of this no new uh, positions policy and the explosion in the use of contractors and temporary staff. And to us, that is at the heart of this issue. And it's reduced the flexibility, in our view, of the public service and meant that staffing arrangements have led to the growth of this unattached list. Now, a primary consideration for when staff are considered excess is whether the number of staff employed is necessary for the, quote, economical management, end quote, of the department. In an environment where the government has limited public sector pay increases to 2.5 per cent, which is below inflation, unless cost savings are proven, it is possible that agencies may well be forced to achieve savings through increased redundancies. The new section 56 means the department head must take all steps to secure transfer of excess officers to ongoing, and I emphasise the point, ongoing public sector positions. The amendments to section 56 are made in the light of the decision uh, in the Public Service Association and Professional Officers Association Amalgamated Union of New South Wales versus the Director of Public Employment 2011. Now, the New South Wales IRCOM 152 is the reference. In this case, the interpretation of, quote, useful work, end quote, explicitly included work on an ongoing basis as well, Madam Temporary Speaker, as temporary, casual or contracted positions. And this really is the heart of the issue. As at March 14, 2012, 
of the 344 jobs advertised in the Jobs New South Wales, Jobs New South Wales website, a total of 131 were identified as casual, temporary or contract positions. This does not, of course, include the vast number of unofficial positions in the public service, if I can call them that, uh, filled by employees from temporary agencies, a number which I suspect and which many members in here I'm sure will agree exceeds both of these figures that were advertised on the Jobs.New South Wales website. Now, in his agreement in principle speech, the Premier indicated that excess employees will be asked to choose between a voluntary redundancy package and a three-month retention period in which to pursue redeployment. Quote, uh, frontline staff, uh, if I can call them that, uh, that the Premier uh, referred to, are not subject to this policy, and I acknowledge the points from the former member who discussed this matter. The three-month retention period in which to pursue redeployment might sound reasonable until you consider the length of time it takes to... Uh, to obtain a public service position, which can see the waits of many months between applications and interviews and interviews and commencement of employment. Under this Act, if the employee cannot find a new job in that limited prescriptive period of time, they will be terminated under Section 56 of the Act. The exclusion from the jurisdiction of the IRC means that these excess employees will not be able to challenge being considered excess employees. Their entitlements as such, including as this relates to the salary or redundancy payments, and, uh, obviously, concerningly, their termination. The Government argues that these amendments will avoid lengthy and ongoing court proceedings under the Industrial Relations Act, which seek to prevent agencies from implementing reasonable changes to their excess employer policies. That the Government seeks to have these considerations excluded from the Industrial Relations Act suggests that they are aware of the potential unfairness involved in the application and the success of any legal challenge. So, well, Madam Temporary Speaker, while uh, we agree that there are issues around this matter, we think that the approach taken in this bill, uh, which in our view was generated as a significant result of the no new, of the no new employees position that the former government has taken, uh, we can see the result, but we believe this approach is not satisfactory. Thank you, Madam Temporary Speaker. The question is that this bill be